We now take up another example of applying Newton's laws to circular motion problems. A person is riding a roller coaster as shown below. At point A, the coaster is traveling at 20 meters per second through the loop. Now let's write that down. V sub A, 20 meters per second. A loop whose radius of curvature is 10 meters. R sub A, 10 meters. At point B, the coaster is on top of the track whose radius of curvature is 15 meters. RB, 15 meters. Assume the track is frictionless and that the total mass of the coaster rider is 500 kilograms. M, 500 kilograms. And we'll assume frictionless. Now, one of the things to note is this may not look like a circle problem, but along this part of any curved track, say this part here, is something that appears to be a circle, and you could fit a circle of a particular radius to that part of the curve. That is called the radius of curvature, and you can find it by in more advanced math classes like calculus. But for us, it's simply good enough to know that on straight lines can be thought of as a circle with a radius of infinity, and that any other curved path, the radius is less than infinity, and they gave you the radius. So when you work straight lines and curves, or straight lines and circles, then you've worked any type of curve, no matter how complicated it may appear. Likewise, up here, and actually my drawing looks like it's a lot bigger than just 50% more, but we're saying that there is, in essence, a circle and that there is acceleration toward the center of that circle just as there is acceleration toward the center of this circle. So this is our B right here is that. And this right here is our sub A. All right, now let's attack the problem. We're looking for the normal force, it says, okay, at point A. All right, so we're looking for the normal force at point A. We need forces. That tells us Newton's second law. We need a free body diagram. There's our object. It has weight W. Normal force is from the bottom of the object by the track pointing upward in sub A. I draw an axis. I want to put one of my axis lines along the radius. In this case, I'm going to put the y-axis. Now I'm going to put the x button in this case because it's a vertical problem. I chose to put the y. Some of the forces in x is mAx. Some of the forces in y is mAy. Forces in x, there are no forces pointing along x. So that means that ax is zero. I've divided out the M in this case, which is 500. 500 times A is zero, then A is zero. And probably to be careful, I should put meters per second squared there. Now on Y, I had the normal going up minus the weight is equal to M times acceleration of Y. Now acceleration of Y is not zero. If you put in zero for both X and Y's acceleration, You'd have no acceleration, and it would go in a straight line constant speed, and it's not doing that, it's following a curved path. The acceleration we have is upward in the positive y direction, and it's equal to the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r. So v sub a squared over r sub a. And that's the key thing you got to put in there. So now, the normal force a minus mg is equal to m v a squared over r sub a. So the normal force is equal to m v a squared over r a plus g. Now a lot of problems sometimes people will express acceleration in the units of g. And what they've done there is that they'll factor this g out front. 
so that what's out here is the weight rather than mass because a lot of times the what's given to them is the weight not the mass and then this will be one so they have the weight times one and then over here they'll have v squared over r which is acceleration but divided by g so if this was for instance 9.8 then they'd get one as well and they say that's one g they do this because it's convenient to compare this acceleration to the acceleration due to gravity and more importantly when multiplied by the mass the force required to produce acceleration to the force required to hold up the weight if you had forgot about the weight and you had designed this as an engineer or physicist then what you would find is that you would think that the force required by this track up here is going to be equal to mg now it turns out mg is roughly 500 kilograms times 10 or 5,000 kilograms and there are 2.2 kilograms that lead to a pound of force so the thing would be about 11,000 pounds of force required to push up on this track turns out that this is grossly underestimating as we're going to see it's underestimating by a factor of five so the track would break the car would fly off tangent the path and people would get hurt so this term here can be very very important furthermore we're going to find this is about four g's four g's is a lot of acceleration okay that may be far too much for what people can stand at least especially pregnant ladies or other children so you might need to replace this you could lower this but if you lower this speed it'll take longer to make the trip it won't be as exciting of a ride and on top of that it's possible that because it's so much slower you won't be able to get enough people into the ride and out of the ride in a given amount of time let's say an hour to make it profitable you can also reduce this acceleration by increasing the radius not making such a tight turn this doesn't slow you down it doesn't make the ride necessarily less exciting and it keeps your throughput for money going up these are the sort of things that people have to make in the real world on decisions they first solve the basic physics and then they play the question of how to improve design all right so let's finish this uh, particular problem uh, okay 500 kilograms 20 meters per sec squared 10 meters plus 9.8 meters per second squared and that gives us a normal force of I had to pull my calculator out of my bag to do this calculation and I've done kind of a rough thumb calculation I don't want to get an exact number so I have 40 plus 9.8 times 500 24,900 newtons or in terms of pounds 49,800 pounds of force considerably more than what we said earlier which was about and I said I said uh, earlier incorrectly that I thought let's see I, sh I should have, I'm slightly corrected. The correct answer in pounds of force was 54,780, about five times, like I said it was. Um, so, the track not only has to lift the weight, that was a very small portion, but it also has to provide an even greater force to cause it to follow this curved path. And that turns out to be four times more force for the curved path part that is shoving it up than it had to provide for the weight. Altogether, five times the weight. Something else to, to notice about this, if you wanted to make this thing go down, you could make R go to infinity. And if you made R go to infinity, you're talking about a straight path. So on the straight path, it only has to hold up the weight. That's the least. On any curved path like this that you have, 
the force required is going to go up dramatically and you're going to have to worry about things like the strength of the material and so forth. All right, on part B we will take up in the next video.